debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Calgary Confederation. Madam Speaker, today I rise to speak to this bill, Bill C-65, the Electoral Participation Act. However, uh, I like to refer to it as the Electoral Ousted Liberal Pension Act, or uh, uh, some of my colleagues refer to it refer to it as the NDP Liberal Election Pension Protection Act. As a member of Parliament, though, Madam Speaker, I am deeply committed to upholding the principles of dem democracy and fairness, and I must voice my strong opposition to this legislation and its detrimental implications for our political system. At the heart of my uh, opposition is the proposal or the uh, provision in this bill to move the election day to a later date to solely benefit certain members of Parliament in qualifying for their pensions. Literally, this bill is a cynical attempt by the Liberal government to move the election day from October 20th to October 27th next year, which would then result in 80 MPs getting a pension or qualify for a pension because they will have reached the required six years of service. So long story short, Madam Speaker, this is a bill aimed at giving pensions to losing Liberals at the next election. In fact, of the 80 MPs, yes, there are 32 Conservatives, there are 22 Liberals, there are 19 Bloc Quebecois, and there are six NDP MPs who will benefit from this proposed election day change. However, my colleagues, Canada's Conservatives, are very much opposed to this change, even if we are the party that stands to benefit the most. And not just the Conservatives in Canada here are opposed, there are many others, others who uh, have not voted Conservative in the past are opposed to this bill. And it is because, specifically because of the change in date of this proposed election. This proposal is not just a procedural twerk. It strikes at the core of what it means to serve in public office with integrity and accountability. Elections should never be scheduled to line the pockets of losing MPs. We all knew the rules when we came here, and we ought to abide by them. You can't change the rules just because you're losing the game. And this is what I certainly see occurring here, Madam Speaker, and it's rather disgusting in my eyes. Let me be clear about this proposal in this bill. By shifting the election date, this Liberal government is manipulating the electoral process to serve the interests of a select few MPs that are nearing their forced retirement. This undermines the democratic foundation upon which our country stands, and it reflects poorly on the House, this House as a whole. It has never been okay to change the rules for personal benefit, and I even question if those 80 MPs who stand to benefit are in conflict of interest when it comes time to vote on this bill. And, for, and perhaps they shouldn't be voting on this bill, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. Perhaps they, maybe they shouldn't even be speaking on this bill. That is a food for thought, food for thought for you, Madam Speaker, and food for thought for perhaps maybe the Ethics Commissioner. If the motivation to move to the final election day is actually motivated by an intent to avoid provincial elections or cultural holidays, then the Liberal government should look at moving it up instead. Make it happen sooner so that it does not look so cynical in the eyes of the taxpayer. In fact, we here on the Conservative side, Madam Speaker of the House, we would love and would be happy to move it, maybe perhaps maybe up a year or even this summer. Let's have it during the stampede. Wouldn't that be a celebration at the stampede uh, winning the election? Most Canadians are ready to cast their ballot now, Madam Speaker, and uh, not, not drag it on for another year and a half. Well, enough on that, Madam Speaker. With respect to existing legislation and the other additional measures proposed in this bill, Canadians are offered significant 
alternative ways and days to vote in general elections, and I'm talking about talking about advanced polls, perhaps. Or, uh, that that is an alternative, absolutely. Al advanced polls. Uh, they are in existence. They are held on the 10th, the 9th, and the 8th, and the 7th days before an election day. In fact, uh, I myself have rarely voted on election day, and I found that advanced polls are very effective ways of guaranteeing that you make your vote count. Uh, you know, you leave your vote to the last days. It, it could have some risk, of course. You can find yourself sick or otherwise unable to attend a polling station due to uh, weather reasons or a vehicle breakdown or whatever. Uh, crowds uh, tend to be usually less at advanced polls also, rather than on election day, which is uh, certainly appealing to me. I, I hate crowds, but I'm speaker, so get me in on an advanced poll any day that, um, over election for sure. Uh, there are other uh, methods of voting also, Madam Speaker. You can vote by mail. Uh, most complete an application. You, you, know, you must complete an ap application, of course, uh, for this registration and special ballot by mail. Uh, yeah, you have to do it after the election is called, however. And if you live outside Canada, uh, Canada's living abroad, you can apply. You can apply any time. You can apply now to vote by mail in a future election, whenever that may be. Uh, you can also vote in person at uh, any Elections Canada office across the country um, when an election is called, and you can do that until the sixth day before election day. So if you're on holidays in Charlottetown or, and you uh, live in Calgary, for example, uh, you, can, you can vote in Charlottetown. Um, you just have to go to an office there and you must com also, again, complete an application for registration and special ballot. You've got to show your identity, of course, and, uh, and where, you, uh, where you live. But uh, you can get a, uh, a ballot then as well. So there are many options, many opportunities, many ways to, to vote uh, during election. And uh, I want to talk a bit now about uh, voter participation, Madam Speaker. Voter participation in Canada, um, as most of us know, it, it has fluctuated greatly over the time since we have been a country. But, uh, you know, back in 1896, for example, only 62.9% of Canadians voted. But the following election in, in 1900, that November 7th of 1900, uh, we saw the rate rise to a near record of 77.4%. That was when um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wilfrid Laurier was re-elected. He was re-elected to a second majority government then, and uh, you know he was. Uh, that was the ninth Parliament of Canada, of course. There were. 128 seats. Uh, he won over uh, a conservative, Charles Tupper. Um, so back then, 77.4% of Canadians uh, participated. Um, the rate uh, of voter participation did not drop below 62% for the next 100 years. So it was uh, fairly high, but since then we saw a persistent drop in voter participation. You know, starting in 1988, voter participation started its decline from 75.3% uh, to a rate that now, within these last few elections, have hovered in the low to mid-60s. So there is no question that in recent years, voter turnout has been a pressing concern in Canadian elections. The fact remains, though, that if you do not cast your vote, the person that does is the one that speaks for you. And as the saying goes, those who do not participate in the democratic process, they are destined to be ruled by those that do. And uh, we also have heard the expression, if you didn't vote, you don't have the right to complain. And I certainly have said that to many people that I've talked to uh, who come to me to either complain about this current Liberal government or complain about maybe perhaps the work, some of the work I do in my constituency. I ask them, well, did you vote? And if they 
say no, I would say, well, then you don't have the right to complain to me. Um, however, we can take some uh, satisfaction, though, in knowing that Canadians are traditionally better at turning out for elections than our neighbours to the south. The uh, 2020 election in the U.S. saw a record turnout. It, uh, it uh, brought 66% of the voting population to get out and vote down there in the States. Historically, though, American elections are often decided with less than 50% of the population. Madam Speaker, for many years, the focus on increasing voter participation has focused on additional voting opportunities and alternative voting methods, but it has not worked out as, uh, as hoped. One must honestly ask why voter turnout continues to go down as the number of opportunities to vote has only increased. This downward trend in voter participation indicates a troubling disengagement among Canadians with their democratic process. Youth in particular, Madam Speaker. Youth voter turnout in uh, Canadian federal elections remains lower than the turnout of all other age groups. The most common reason for not casting a ballot is that many youth are just not interested in politics. They are, they are disengaged, they're disengaged. They're, there is no hope for these, uh, these uh, young voters uh, with this current economy the way it is, the way this uh, Liberal government has uh, decimated our, our uh, economy. However, I am pretty confident, though, that voter turnout at all ages and all age groups will dramatically increase in the next election as people look to make sure change happens in Ottawa. It will be a desire to rid a government that has a new scandal by the day right. and a phony NDP opposition party who sold their soul to keep the Liberals in power this long. Madam Speaker, I also think we need to focus on instilling the importance of voting as a civic duty. Let me share with you a part of a speech that I gave a while ago, it was a couple of years ago now, to uh, new citizens. It was at a uh, citizens sh citizenship swearing ceremony in Calgary. It was at the TELUS Spark Centre, close to the zoo for you people who want to know where the TELUS is, TELUS Spark Centre. I said at that, uh, at that swearing-in ceremony, I said, today you raise your hand and took the oath of Canadian citizenship. Today you become part of the Canadian story, a land of many people with, from many lands with one shared goal, a better Canada. Now you will be able to participate in our great democracy. No matter your political stripe, you all now have a treasure duty to participate and make Canada even greater. Embrace your new citizenship, cherish what it means, and enjoy what it provides. Your new citizenship carries with it many responsibilities. To better your community, to help your fellow Canadians, and to proudly represent our nation around the world. Madam Speaker, we need to instill in Canadians, new and old, that one has a duty they have a duty to participate in our democratic process. We need to show people that elections do matter, that their voice is heard and that they have the power to determine who leads their country. We owe it to those. We owe it to those who fought for us in, the, in past wars, who died on distant battlefields to ensure we have that freedom today, that freedom to vote. Madam Speaker, finally, in conclusion, um, as parliamentarians, we have a duty to uphold the highest standards of transparency and accountability. We are entrusted by the people of Canada to represent their interests and, and safeguard the de democratic values upon which our country was founded. Bill C-65, the bill we're debating here tonight in its current form, fails to meet those standards. Let's be honest with the Canadians. This is not a bill about increasing voter participation. This is a bill that aimed 
that is aimed at giving pensions to losing liberals at the next election. This is disgusting. It's self-serving behavior that is likely the cause of voter apathy in this country more than anything else. This bill pr prioritizes short-term gains for a handful of MPs over their long-term health of our democracy and the trust of our citizens. So I call upon my fellow colleagues across party lines to join me in opposing this bill, this Bill C-65. We need to stand together in defense of democratic principles and the rights of all Canadians. So let's uh, send a message, a, a resounding message, that we are committed to a political system that values integrity, fairness, and above all else, the public trust. Thank you, Madam Speaker.